Hey guys, it's Libby and I can almost like a hundred percent guarantee that every single one of you either deals with a mental illness or knows somebody who is dealing with a mental illness. So this video is for everybody. I'm going to be talking about how to support someone with a mental illness. So if you have a mental illness, you can send this video to somebody who might not know how to support you. Or if you know somebody who has a mental illness, this video is for you. So let's get started. I want to start off by saying that today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an online therapy platform that matches their clients, aka you, with one of their over 15,000 counselors in their network. If you're matched with a counselor and you do not click with them, you can just switch counselors. It is so much easier to switch counselors online than switch counselors like in person, real life kind of thing. So that's awesome. You can start communicating with your counselor within 48 hours hours which is so fast so many counselors have wait lists and stuff but within 48 hours you'll be matched to a counselor you can message this counselor anytime as well as have a phone or video call with them once a week if you sign up with my link in the description you'll get a discount off your first month and therapy never goes on sale so it's really awesome that you can start off just a little bit cheaper that said, let's dive into how you can support someone with a mental illness. The first thing you should do is educate yourself on what they're struggling with. So if they've got depression, Google it. Go to the DSM, whatever. Learn about depression. If they're dealing with PTSD, same thing. Learn about it. However, do not assume that you know everything about this illness or their personal experience just because you did some research. Also, do not diagnose them. You are not qualified. The next do is listen. Really, really listen. Be an active listener. If you want to know what active listening is, I can make a separate video about that, so leave that in the comments if you'd like, or you can just Google it. It's all over the place. Do not judge them. That should be pretty obvious, but I think I should say it just in case. Do not judge them. Also, do not force or expect them to open up to you, especially right away, you know? Mental illness has a stigma. A lot of people are afraid to talk about it. You know, it's a very personal thing. If they're not ready to open up to you, do not force them to and do not expect them to. Also, do not compare their struggles to yours or anybody else's. If you want to say, yeah, I totally know what you feel like, like I've, I've gone through something like that, like that's fine, okay. But do not say, yeah, well, when I was depressed, you know, I, this or that, you know, like, so don't be comparing it to anybody else's, including yours, because that can minimize what their experience is. And it also takes the focus off of them. If you're going to them to help them, and then you start talking about yourself, like that, that doesn't make any sense. Something else you should do is ask them how you can support them all the time. Whether they're like actively super struggling or not, how can you support them? And then ask them when they are in some sort of crisis or really struggling, how can you support them in those moments? Do not force yourself on them if they are not ready for your support. If they are not ready to have you engaged in this experience, this struggle with them, do not force yourself into it. It is not going to go well. Do help them find resources to get help, whether that's therapy, psychiatry, support groups, anything like that, if they're interested in it. Also, you can help them find other people in their life that they can turn to because you might not always be totally available to help them, so help them find other people who they can turn to. Do not force them into something they are not ready for. If they're not ready for therapy, forcing them to go to therapy isn't going to be very fruitful, okay? Do not force them to go to a support group. Do not force them to out themselves to everybody they know, okay? Do help them set goals for themselves, and I highly recommend making SMART goals. If you don't know what SMART goals are, feel free to leave in the comments if you want me to make a video about it, or just Google it. Again, that's all over the place. Do not be overly positive and say things like, oh, everything's gonna be okay, oh, don't worry, be happy, or like, oh, da, you know, like, don't, don't just like say like, oh, it'll be, it'll be fine, you know, like that's not helping them get through it. So by setting goals, you're helping them make changes in their life to be happier. If you're just like saying, oh, don't worry about it, oh, it'll be fine, oh, da, like that's not going to help them. 
That all said, these things don't totally apply to people who are a risk to themselves or others because if they're in that position, they might need to be forced into getting help. They might need to be forced into opening up. They might need to be forced into therapy, you know? Um, so if they're a risk to themselves or others, these things don't necessarily apply, but I'm just talking about when people are not a risk to themselves or others. I also just want to mention that better help cannot help people who are a risk to themselves or others, whether that's self-harm, suicidal thoughts, homicidal thoughts, because they can't, like, send you to a hospital or something like a regular therapist could, you know? So, yeah. But those are my do's and don'ts of helping people with a mental disorder. I hope that this video was informative. If you have any more do's and don'ts you want to talk about in the comments, feel free. I'd love to see them. Um, but, yeah, that's all I got for you. So, have a good one. Bye-bye.